As the global threat landscape shifts and evolves, AWS services that help protect our customers from those threats also evolve to meet their needs. One type of threat that has changed considerably over the past few years is distributed denial of service. DDoS events have evolved from targeting lower network layers to focusing on the application layer. Due to this shift, AWS services used to detect and mitigate DDoS events have evolved as well. We recently launched a new AWS Web Application Firewall Managed Rule Group targeted specifically at automatic mitigation of application layer DDoS events. I'm Lawton Pittenger, a Security Specialist Solutions Architect, and today I'll show you how to set up this new application layer DDoS protection managed rule group. To get started, I'll navigate to the AWS WAF console and I'll switch over to use the new console experience. In addition to the feature we'll be covering in this video, we recently launched this new WAF console experience to simplify security configuration by providing pre-configured protection packs, automated security recommendations, and a unified dashboard for clear visibility into security status. To learn more about this new console experience, refer to the resources linked in the video description below. To build out a new WAF protection pack, I'll select Create Protection Pack. Under App Category, I'll select Other. For resources to protect, I'll select a demo ALB, which pre-prepared for this video. Under choose protection pack, I'll select you build it, AWS managed rule group, next. Scroll down to the bottom, select anti-DDoS protection for layer seven attacks. So one of the key features of this new managed rule group is the amount of control it provides you for mitigation. When configuring this using the AWS management console, the default configuration options are pre-populated. However, if you're using APIs or infrastructure as code tools, these values will need to be explicitly passed. For the majority of web applications, the default settings are sufficient to provide robust and reliable protection against volumetric DDoS traffic. However, it's still good to be aware of all the configuration options to understand what you may want to customize or fine tune for your use case. The first option you can configure is whether or not to enable challenge mitigations. Challenges run silently to help distinguish regular client sessions from bot sessions and make it more costly for bots to operate. The verification runs in the background without involving the end user. Challenge is a good option for verifying clients that you suspect of being invalid without negatively impacting the end user experience with a CAPTCHA puzzle. Next, you can configure the URIs where challenge is not supported by using regular expressions. Anything that doesn't match these regular expressions is considered challengeable. The default expression that's provided in the console covers most use cases, but you should still review it and adapt it for your application as needed. One important thing to note with the challenge action is that if your application includes clients that do not support JavaScript, for example, a mobile application, you'll need to either integrate it with the AWS WAF SDK or add the URI to this exception regex expression. A common example of adapting this would be for the API prefix. The default value pre-populated in the console uses slash API. However, your application most likely has a different path for your API, for example, my API or something else. In this case, you would want to adapt this setting to reflect your configuration. For this demo, I'm going to leave the challenge mitigations enabled and leave the default URI regular expression. The next option you can configure is the mitigation sensitivity. There are three levels of sensitivity, high, medium, and low. Low sensitivity is less sensitive, causing the rule to match only on the most obvious participants in a DDoS event, which have the high suspicion label. Medium sensitivity causes the rule to match on medium and high suspicion labels, and high sensitivity causes the rule to match on all of the suspicion labels. There are two ways to mitigate web requests coming to resources that are under a DDoS event. You can tune both mitigation types to be more or less sensitive to the detected level of threat. First, for the sensitivity of challenging DDoS traffic, AWS recommends setting this to high since it has minimal impact on legitimate traffic. As for the sensitivity of blocking DDoS traffic, AWS recommends setting this to low to block only highly suspicious DDoS traffic. However, as with any AWS WAF rule, we recommend monitoring it and adjusting it based on observed patterns. Next, for the scope of inspection, I'm going to leave the default option of inspect all requests selected. We actually do not recommend scoping this rule group down as to allow it as to be as effective as possible in detection and mitigation. This rule group should be inspecting as much traffic as possible. This gives it the ability to track the most traffic and apply mitigations when required. 
To accomplish this, it should be placed towards the top of your WAF protection pack priority, directly below any allow rules you may have configured. Next, under the Rule Override section, you can override the default rule actions for the three individual sub-rules included as part of this managed rule group. The first rule being Challenge All During Event. This rule will challenge all requests when a DDoS event is detected. The default action of this rule is set to Challenge. Next is the Challenge DDoS Requests rule, which matches challengeable requests during a DDoS event using the Challenge Sensitivity configuration, which we configured above. So since we left the default option of high selected, this rule will challenge requests that have a low, medium, or high suspicion label. Lastly, you can configure the DDoS requests rule, which by default is designed to block suspicious requests with low sensitivity to help block only highly suspicious DDoS traffic. However, you can always override the default rule actions to something else. For this demo, I'll leave everything as default. Now that we've gone through all the configuration options as part of this rule group, Let's take a look at the labels this rule group can attach to incoming requests. This rule group adds metadata labels falling into three main categories. First, we have mitigation labels that identify DDoS-related activities, such as when suspicious requests are detected or when a DDoS event is in progress. Second, there are challenge-related labels that help track when and how challenges are being applied to requests, including which requests are challengeable and when challenges are triggered during active events. Last. We have suspicion labels, high, medium, and low, which indicate how likely a request is to be a part of a DDoS event. These labels are particularly valuable as they can be used in custom WAF rules as well to implement additional logic, such as rate limiting or blocking based on suspicion levels. They also provide enhanced visibility in your WAF dashboard and logs during DDoS events. To finish adding the rule, I'll scroll down and select Create Rule, and there you have it. We've walked through the complete setup and configuration of the new application layer DDoS protection managed rule group. We've covered everything from initial setup in the console, potential configuration options, and understanding the powerful labeling system. Remember, while the default settings provide robust protection for most workloads, the real power of this rule group lies in its flexibility to be customized to your specific needs. For additional resources and best practices on protecting your applications against DDoS events, check out the AWS security blog and documentation linked in the description. If you have any questions about implementing this rule group within your own environment, please drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.